It's August the 12th, 2014. And we are going to have a chat about a crazy story. University of Victoria oceanographer leads a new radioactive monitoring network. But first, let me say hi to everybody. Haha, <laughs> I'm so happy to have you as friends. You really are a special bunch. You have no idea. And I gotta have to keep telling you from now on, I guess. Is you folks are amazing. I'm looking over here because that's where you are. <laughs> You're actually right there. So we got the motor home is working. We got I think around six thousand raised. Um, we got two Geiger counters, nice ones coming. Uh, laptop. We got. Oh, we think we got microscopes, nice ones. We think we got. Let me get this out of my ear. We think we got, and I just want to get everybody up to speed. We think, and it's been a good couple of days. I feel much better today. I'm good to go now. We feel that um, we got two 24 million pixel cameras coming, but we're not going to depend on any of it, right? We're just going to keep pushing on to make sure we go. We we can go. We can't make it all the way, but we, by the time we're ready to go on Thursday, I have no doubts. You know, shortly after that, we'll be in good shape. Uh, good to keep going, right? We got enough to keep going for for a number of weeks without an issue, and so that's huge. That's massive, in my opinion. It's inconceivable. That is so cool. And so today we're like, oh, the motor home, <laughs> ah, <laughs> just solve all of our problems, just like that. Pretty cool. So Jay Collins getting six hundred thirty thousand over three years. Uh, that was a couple of days where we came out with our video about and if anybody's not familiar with that we went and i'll just touch bases on it and bring up the desktop presenter here we can dodge over it and we'll come back over here in a second and these are all trips i've made i made 16 trips just so people can understand it and that's long i got most of it up on the website the nuclear proctologist today um, we went to these beaches and we got a 16 million pixel camera that's not enough but it's close enough that you can see there's no life anymore and there's only four species left on the coastline that we found in 16 spots and this spot here like Smuggler's Cove there was nothing on the rocks everything was dead there was there was two types of algae there was the kelp weed there was the, the kelp, you see the other stuff, the kelp uh, lettuce. There was mussels and purple starfish, and that's all we found. We didn't find any babies or anything in a 200 kilometer zone. And let me just jump back over and we can jump back. I got um, Jay Cullen's video there from CBC in 2013. We're going to jump over that in a little tiny bit. But we covered 200 kilometers. Jay Cullen just got 630,000. He should have to go to every spot I went. He should have to work with me right alongside of me just me and him on the boat and we can go to all of these spots and get Jay's opinion we can get him up on the show right he won't come within a hundred thousand yards of me right you know he's in the comment section he's the troll we've been getting for the last couple of days because we threw a mess into that for him we showed up two days later hit 16 beaches and so what they're planning on doing is they're gonna go around to all the communities wait till you get a load of what they're actually up to they're going to go around to all the communities and talk to people at town hall meetings. They're not going to go down and take pictures. They're not going to go down on the coastline of each of these communities and survey it. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And how is everybody? For the last while, we haven't got a chance to say anything to anybody. So let's try to say hello. Stacy Anderson. Stacy, come up with another great picture. I see. And uh, that's pretty cool, Stacy. You're something else. You really are. John Townsend. Wanda. Hugs, honey, and Annie, Alex, Cats Alive, uh, Amthurs. Uh, getting a few names in before we get winding up here because you folks, you really changed the game, folks. You changed the game. Un unimaginable that you pulled it off. You only pulled it off, and it only took you a couple of days. Ray J. Collin got 630,000. He, you know, we went and done all that that we covered, that whole area. And you folks giving us six hundred dollars. We covered 200, 200 kilometers, sixteen beaches. We covered more than that, but that's the point. See, and he doesn't go look at a single beach. He doesn't take a single picture. And I'll tell you why. 
Whoa! Wait till you see what I got for you folks tonight. I got something lovely. And we're having a bit of fun tonight. Now, tomorrow night, seeing as Jay Cullen, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Jay Cullen got $630,000. I was going to do a money bomb tonight, and I just, I ran out of steam. And then I came across this one. Somebody said I should go hook up with him, go to work with him. I agree. <laughs> oh, you have no idea? You, that would just be, uh, just come on, land on my lap. So we should, everybody should contact the University of Victoria. This is the game, I think. Now, I'm going to come to that part after. But what we're going to do is we're going to spend the next 15 minutes. And we're going to try to get through a six-minute video of Jay Cullen. And he's on CBC. And he's lying the entire time. And so we're going to break that down. We're going to jump back and forth and get through that. And I'll show you what he's actually saying in 2013, where he's saying there's not even a melted reactor. And Buddy says, well, what about if they had a melted reactor? He said, that'd be a lot different. My goodness, Harvard and Berkeley and Stanford, you can find the video clips on my site with the links to the whole videos they put out on the 15th and 16th. And by the way, we'll do live phone calls too. They hung up on us. You can call back. It's okay, man. Uh, that's okay. So you folks can call me too after the video. We're going to put up a question and answer. I'll hold it up and you can be heard. We'll try that. And tomorrow night when I get everything patched up, we're going to be able to do Skype. Take questions for Skype. And try to bring try to bring this thing together before we head up north and, and start having some conversations, right? Because soon we're going to head up, but we got our eye on a satellite phone. And so we should be able to do a, a live streams, not high quality, but live streams, regular streams out of anywhere up there, even right from the beach. Wow, looking so good, eh? I'm going to take that call. I'll leave the mic up. Hello. Yes? Go ahead, I'm sorry. You got somebody talking? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Who's this again? Jeff? Oh, oh, hi, Jeff. You, we're on. We're online right now, but we're not going to do the money bomb tonight. We're going to do it tomorrow night. I got off ball. But hey, do you want to? Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hang on, there. We put you up on a speaker. Try that. Okay, it looks like we got a lag here. That's where I'm getting mixed up. Yeah, you got to turn my audio off on your end. Okay, got it. So, folks, you're listening to the original Punisher, Jeff. And Jeff just calls in to say hi here. Say hi to everybody, Jeff. When you ready? Hi, everyone. Hey. Jeff, the original Punisher. <laughs> Jeff Pelko. Jeff Pelko, the original Punisher. Yeah, no, they, they can hear you, I'm pretty sure, but it's by the looks of it. That that microphone's pretty good. So that's Jeff yeah, from the original Punisher. Yeah, I Dana to uh, address that Jay Collin thing, where he just received a donation, 630. Right. Well, I would like to make a donation here. I'll do it tonight with you. I am going to uh, donate for you two thousand dollars, Dana. Wow! No and way! And a uh, so cool, Geiger man. counter that I've used in my videos. So I'll be sending that to you the next day. That's too cool, Jeff. You're way too cool, man. I mean, that really changes the game. See, that's that's extraordinarily generous, and that's what I mean, folks. It's just a like they just a few handfuls of you people are going to make this happen. That's something we're going to look back on and be proud about. I'm telling you right now, we're not Jay Cullen where they throw 600,000 kickbacks to him for lying to you for all these years. We're going to come to that video in a few minutes. But Punisher, we'll talk to you in a bit. Jeff, okay, we'll cut you off. Okay, Dana and everyone, peace and love. Yeah, peace and love, Jeff. Thank you, bud. You're awesome, man. That's unimaginable. Everybody's saying thanks, Jeff. Okay, buddy, we'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you. Peace okay. and love, everyone. Yeah, you too, Jeff. Thank you. Way too cool. Two thousand dollar donation. Oh, it wouldn't take me long to get surpassed. Can you imagine what I could do? I don't need that much, right? All I need to do is sixty days, and I don't need six hundred and thirty thousand to go out and lie to everybody in the community. Not go down to a single beach, right? You should go read all the links I got below. They're not going to go down to a single beach, eh? And at the same time. They're taking money from all the children and putting them, their pictures up on uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic, who's hosting them. And the name of that site is Our Radioactive Ocean. Our, ra our Radioactive Ocean. Yay, 
a radioactive ocean? You guys are demented. You went after the names, right? Because you know people were going to come out with that one. Dot org. Dot org. And you're not going to take a picture. And so let's go down that road here tonight. And the reason I'm saying all of this stuff is because, like I said earlier in the video, and like the news we broke in the last few days, we have covered 200 miles of coastline, never found no insects. We never, like, let me explain this to you. We never, very quick, we never found any sand dollars, Jay, Cullen, University of Victoria. We never found any limpets. We never found any snails. We found no sea anemones. And that, those pictures are all up on my site. There's hundreds of them. We, and on 16 beaches. And we're going to do all of them again in a few days. Every one of those beaches with a much higher quality camera. And we're going to do it from the shoreline and the ocean. To test all of our gear before we take off. And so we're going to post all that. Much higher quality. Much more detail. So that nobody. So we don't have to come back later and deal with it. We're going to do it before we take off. Get the kinks out of it for two days. And then next Thursday we're out the gate. Thanks to you unimaginable cool folks. Now, we went down and searched. There's nothing right for 200 kilometers, folks. This is not a joke. And that's why we're heading up north now to go look for the rest of the north coast. 200, mile, 200 kilometers, rather, of this coastline. And it don't recede itself. And it don't recede itself. And nobody, uh, everybody attacks the messenger. Nobody says, holy cow. You know, how can you be wrong after 16 beaches, folks? Is anybody's guess? That's why we went to that extent. We took a 40-kilometer boat ride at the top up in um, Desolation Sound, and down behind me is like Molly's Reach over there. Literally 200 kilometers of coastline. And so now we're going to start playing on the videos, and anybody wants to phone in after, and that's extraordinary of Jeff. I forgot to phone Jeff and tell him, because he was going to be a good sport and kick off a fundraiser. But with all the good stuff going on today, and I'll get into more of that later, I kind of got past me. I'm worn out from the adrenaline, but I feel so good all of a sudden. I feel healthy. I feel like I can really, truly go. I think that's what I was more, that's what I was crying about last night. I was fearful. I just, I needed to feel that I could go. I need to be liberated. And that's what happened. And then Jeff, $2,000 in a Geiger counter. Wow. See, just a couple of people like that have really, there was another lady, $2,000. It's unimaginable because she lived in, by one of those dots. And she knows. I talked to a foundation last night. They were, they were heartbroken. They were devastated. They watched my material, went through the pictures that we had up at the time. We still got more to go up, but we got a lot more up today, finally. So we got a good shot up to now. We got 16 samples. We'll get the rest of them in each section, but that's huge. Now we're going to go and do it all again with 24 million pixel cameras, and we're going to take soil samples at the same time. And we're going to be extremely detailed. You're not going to get... That was our first try. We didn't know what we were doing. We were looking for life, but we didn't understand that the first couple of days. We were confused. Well, let's go down to another beach. And then we struck us. Okay, now we got to get better. We got to get smarter. We'll keep going and we'll come back and do this. But by the time you got your nine days of low tide, the urgency that I felt was, and Terry, is that we got no choice. It's unbelievable. We got to go all the way north. We got to do the west coast of Vancouver Island. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do the west coast of Vancouver Island. We'll send you the pictures, Jay. Everyone I got there, I'll send them to you after the show. We're going to go do the entire north coast. And every time we post them, we're going to send you links, Jay. And we're going to CC that out to all the media. That's that's more than what I thought I could do. So I'm going to do that too. Because you got 600,000 that want you running away and taking your eye off that stuff. Let's get into Jay. And you'll see why I'm a little bit angst about this. Now well, I'm going to hit the silent button up here. And then I have to stop the player. When I got to keep going. This is worth it. The video is six minutes long. Uh, I'm not going to get that far before I stop and, and explain what he's just done to you and why it's so obvious. And you'll get it just for people who don't understand it. Not for the hounds. I love you, folks. Oh, you were something special. We've said that so many times. But what you've done for me the last couple of days, you know, we deserved it, see? we got to go find out. 
and now we're going to. That's unbelievable. Last night I would I didn't think that we get out the gate when I want to get out the gate. Now we now we now we're free to go, and I'll worry about it, the rest of it in three or four weeks. And boy, Dan, enough will trickle in. We'll finish the job. Unbelievably cool, fantastic. That's the end of that one. It's over. Now let's put the screws to UBC, you you and University Victoria. Da 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 da. Stuttering, and I'll click it because I'm so excited. I feel so good. Like I like I really truly do. I'm ready to go. I'll fight Jake Cullen, MMA in the wheelchair as long as he doesn't stand up. I'll take you on, man. MMA style in wheelchairs though. You're not allowed to get up. I'll take you on anytime you want. I'll bust your molars. Here we go. Jay Cullen on CBC. And the date is dear. I haven't got my glasses on. 2013 November? This morning by Jay Cullen, a professor in the Department of Earth and Ocean Sciences at the University of Victoria. Jay Cullen, good morning. Good morning, Gregor. And what do you mean? make of uh, David Suzuki's uh, comments? Well, I think that David's quite right in pointing out that the, the situation at the Fukushima reactors are, uh, it's a very serious situation, and it's a problem that's not likely to go away anytime soon. Um, the authorities there are just starting to remove some of the spent fuel rods, and there's risk of further release of radiation to the environment. But um, myself, colleagues at Ocean Networks Canada and the Department of Fisheries and Ocean. Okay, hang on now. He's talking about Unifor, they're going to remove the fuel rods. And so let me break that one down really fast. That's why I gotta go to the desktop presenter, back to the videos, jump back and forth. Let's get that up and running. And we got that in our pictures. We got that here. We got that here. Oh, Unifor fakes it. Oh. See that? Let me show you something here, folks. That's uh CBS saying they're inside in the bottom one. I can't even see what I'm doing here. And you can see the, the fuel pool, but look at the uniform alongside of it. Do you think that could still survive inside of it? And now there's now you got to realize that if it was that nice inside of it, right? They wouldn't have to build the structure up alongside of it. And I got to run over and find a picture of that. And of course, where was that? Oh yeah, that was under the connecting the dot file, was it? Did I come out and tore him apart about that one? Dana, hang on. I'll find me foils. I couldn't have shown it off. There he is. Good old connecting dots. What a strange cover that one. So once again, Unit 4, what he was just talking about, they built the structure up and across it. Right? Up and across it. They never went into the, the, the bottom of the reactor. It's 100% meltdown, by the way. And there's the homeless getting their pictures taken. They're running out of them, too, so... They got a structure up and across it, and they put some edges around it, but they're not gone in and fixed it, right? The, no, everybody understands that. They're not claiming that. The buildings don't even touch each other. They're meant to hold a crane that's supposed to reach down to the damaged uh, fuel pools, but the reactor is down there. The fuel pools were above it. So what Jay is saying is a lie right off the way. And how is that, if it was like that on the inside, right, they wouldn't need the structure outside of it. So let's keep going back to Jay. Make sure I get me all points out. Here we go with J. One and a two and a three. I've been hearing lots of questions like the email that you read, um, trying to assess what the risk is to the west coast of North America. And there's a lot of misinformation and hyperbole out there. And, and people are rightly concerned when they see images or hear reports that the radiation is doing lots and lots of damage. And so my motivation is to really talk about what we know based on measurements and to put that risk uh, into perspective. Okay, well, thanks uh, for doing that. So what, what do we know and what measurements have been recorded? Well, since the disaster in, in uh, 2011, um, teams of oceanographic researchers have been making measurements of some of the radionuclides, and maybe the one I'll, I'll talk about today is a, a metal called cesium um, that was released in, in large quantities um, So I got to learn not to do that. He he was talking about cesium. Sorry, folks. 137. Now there's 100 times more strontium 90. Now he brings it up later. Strontium 90. They're worried about it. But see, that's the one you're supposed to be worried about. It's the same as cesium, but there's 100 times more. Right? When you hear about iodine 131, there was 10 times more iodine 132. 
there was 30 times more iodine 133. And none of these travel alone. There's a, you know, several thousand, couple of thousand hardcore from the MOX fuel radioactive elements and isotopes that came straight across the Pacific in three days and then start washing down to the coastline. And that's why I never found nothing in 200 square kilometers. I'm not going to say square. 200 kilometer stretch of the coastline. So let's keep going. I'm, I know it's square, but I never covered that square. So I'm not going to say it. But here we go. I will in a few, a little while though. Haha. <laughs> Thanks for the hounds. Woo! Here we go with Jake. Disaster. And making measurements in the seawater and in organisms to try and gauge what kind of... Okay, see? He's talking about measuring the, the, the results of the organisms. But you go down to that beach, you can't find a fly. You can't find a sea flan. Flan. Boom. Sea uh, flea. You can't find uh, any kind of the creatures that, that are right through the entire coastline because the ocean will seed every square inch. The first 30 feet are the most important parts of the coastline of, of the ocean because it's the nursery. And there's not even a bird that can survive on this coastline. There, certainly three of them won't be able to survive in the same area. It's impossible. There was no insects on the side of the highway for that. Well, the uh, highway was about 160 kilometers worth. We see no in insects in the grill, none on the windshield, and nobody else is cleaning their windshields. We talk to people. We talk to fishermen, and we talk to people in canoes, by the way, and we asked them in kayaks, did they see any uh, life? Uh, like we said starfish. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, where? <laughs> Exactly, specifically. And I told him. And he said, that is very alarming. I said, well, you go to nuclear proctologist and get educated. Go over to Canadian.org, nuclearproctologist.org, and go over to Canadian section. Now, what he done, see, there's no organisms left in that 200 kilometers. There's nothing there. There's no smell. There's no sand dollars. There's no snails. There's no 600 algaes. There's none of the 5,000 little fries and... and uh, larvae and everything else. There's no interaction. There's no crows, no eagles. Jay's not going to go near that. He's going to go around and tell everybody, oh, you know, a few bananas will make everything okay in the morning. Here we go with Jay again. Risk again to the environment um, and to human health um, that the radi radiation that has been released poses to uh, uh, the public and, and, and to the environment. So it's not uh, of a level that's uh, of concern then, at least on this side of the Pacific? Well, what they found is... Well, it takes 130 days for the first plume to come up to the other side of the ocean. At two miles an hour, according to two Japanese studies, the Kurosha current will whip it right across at 48 miles a day. And so 130 days, it slams in your coast. But it wasn't just a plume. Every minute, there's a thousand pounds minimum, if not four or five, ten, thousand pounds of extraordinary radioactive water elements isotopes with with thousands of years lifespan they'll go all the way back to Japan many times they don't disappear that's the big loy and they're not like bananas a banana by the way is homeostasis in other words if you eat the banana the potassium 40 it's harmless and your body can't take any more but if there's a radioactive element in there that we're talking about and he's talking about and you eat it it sequesters and that's something extra so it's like getting an extra every moment of your life see well, let's keep going with the biggest, best lawyer they got who just got a $600,000 bonus, the old payback, the old kickback, the old hush fun. Yeah. Um, the radionuclides that were released from the reactor uh, were in relatively high concentrations for those radionuclides close to the coast of Japan and up to 600 kilometers offshore. Uh, but when we can... Yeah, then it then magically stops. The Japanese done studies showing 1,500 kilometers off the coastline in 30 days because the corrosion current, two miles an hour. Let's keep going. Don't mind me. I get a little bit excited. I'll be okay in the morning. How much radioactivity actually exists in seawater? Most of that radioactivity still is Don't you uh, say it. there um, because of the presence of, of elements that are naturally occurring um, that have been with us for a long period of time. Um, you can't use... Natural radiation in this equation. Are you stupid? How stupid can somebody actually be? They're actually a professor at the University of Victoria, and they're talking about natural radiation. And we're talking about man-made? And there's going to be more natural, I suppose? 
I would hope so. Because it's natural. It's indigenous. It's homeostasis. It's insignificant. It's normal. It's everyday stupid background radiation. Couldn't mutate a fruit fly. But you give them some of this stuff, <laughs> you'll see some pretty cool shit. Dan, I bet you. Here we go. Whack job. Creep. Potassium that probably most people have heard Potassium. of. Potassium. Rubidium uh, is another, which perhaps they have not. But um, Rubidium. So what about the strontium 90, 30 times or 100 times more than any cesium? What about the uranium? Because that's what the reactors run on. The plutonium. But he's got a reason for saying it this way. And we got to keep going to listen to the joke, the punchline. The that are actually being measured um, are a factor of a, of, of a thousand below the concentrations and the activity uh, of those naturally uh, occurring radioactive elements. And you can't get a thousand times less than natural radiation, you creepy man, you disgusting creep that got up on CBC and nobody challenges you. Look, a banana, you can't get any more because it's potassium-40. He can't get less than that by a thousand and still put it in the same equation as e equals mc squared. D do you get the lie? It's that is of a magnitude of not thousands, but hundreds of millions. The comparisons is inconceivable. I can fill the building up with bananas. They can't hurt me. I can't mutate a few fly. You fill it up with some of that stuff, and the whole near West Coast is in trouble. So why is he doing that up on CBC, and nobody challenges him, and then they give him $630,000 to go all over the place to all the communities and town halls, not go down on the coastline and take pictures. No, 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 gotta, don't got to explain that one. Uh, you can't get enough money to pull that one off. So we'll go down and tell him, oh, it's okay, man, it's like a banana. Here we go again across the Pacific and, and, and will um, travel towards the west coast of North America, um, they are going to be diluted and they're, they're going to decay. You can't dilute them and you won't decay for tens and thousands for plutonium, for millions and billions for uranium and their daughters. They don't decay. That's why you're supposed to have them in a sarcophagus till the end of time for 100,000 years and hopefully that generation can figure it out. That's why you dumped it in the ocean because you don't know what to do with it. You don't tell people because you know it's illegal and it's disgusting. And there's a blowback from that because you killed the Pacific. And so they're paying you to come out and hide that. There's four species still on the coast and they're so straggly, it's sickening. And here he gets 630,000. I got 6,300 if I'm lucky. Well, I do now. Thanks to Original Punisher. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to all you folks out there. I mean, today I was still feeling good. But an extra 2,000? See, and I'm going to go ahead and skunk him. I'm going to destroy his 630,000 in the next 60 days. He's not going to get a chance to get his three-year marine environment observation prediction and response network. And he's got a whole team of scientists that are going to collaborate, are going to come on board. And they're all getting, you guessed it, 630,000 to keep it alive for another year or two. But two days later, we showed up. And that's what the trolls are you seeing out there. Here we go. Um, naturally, and by the time they reach the West Coast, which models suggest will be sometime next year, um, those concentrations again. Next year, well, a plume comes every day. When it gets here after 130 days at 2 miles an hour, 24 hours a day, there's 129 plumes behind it. And every day there's another plume crash and moving up the coast, and that's mixing with the South Pacific. And the next day there's another smash. It's moving up the coast. Next day, smash. 1,200, 1,300 days. And Kevin Blanche went to battle for me. I tell you what, that's outstanding. I heard Thomas Ackerman has been at it. And not like everybody. But those two, I mean, they're so hard workers. You have no idea the energy and the effort and the hopes and dreams they put out in every single video of cracking, cracking through people and actually reaching a single person. They're happy with that. Extraordinary people. Extraordinary. Um, a factor of a thousand uh, below the naturally occurring radioactive element. You can't keep saying it. You can't get a thousand. You can't take a uranium 
And magic, if you did, you wouldn't have a problem with Chernobyl. You wouldn't have a problem with Three Mile Island. You wouldn't have a problem with Iraq and Afghanistan. You wouldn't be throwing the barrels off the boat before everybody dies. Because they can't keep it on the boat. They already got their rads for a lifetime. And he's used, he says a thousand times less than a banana. Potassium 40. In other words, it doesn't exist. It's infinitely insignificant. Look, folks, I got nothing to gain. I put all the pictures up on the internet. I never faked that. We never faked 16 beaches, nine days of low tides, and getting pictures, and we find a count of 600 missing algae. 600. Around 70 to 90 sponges missing. And we're talking about coming up to the lowest moon, to a super moon, catching the low tides. If we're going to find it, and I dove the coastline, and both coastlines, I have never experienced something like that. I have never experienced the desolation and the heartbreak. Heartbreak and let's keep going. I believe that the, the, the current measurements and the projections for, for future levels are relatively well are, are quite low and, and and so not a lot of concern is is needed based on uh, on the current levels of radiation from Japan what do you make of uh, of David Suzuki's uh, scenario though if another earthquake hits and there is further damage to Fukushima I mean doesn't that change the picture entirely doesn't that perhaps raise the cause for more concern perhaps significant concern well I think there should be concern um, some of the elements that are being released from the reactors, like strontium, for example, can bioaccumulate in, in the food web. Um, and, and Strontium-90, there's 100 times more, but you're only looking f than cesium-137, which is man-made, but you're only looking for cesium-137. But the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in Canada, like licks their boots, you couldn't believe it. Probably a bad word, but like whatever they do, they mimic it 100% and make our world miserable too. So they got 7,400 becquels of cesium-137, a man-made radioactive element in their drinking water, and, and he's saying they can't find any. They're looking for it. But why did the EPA increase the limits to 7,400 becquels a cubic meter in North American's drinking water? Do you see what kind of lawyer this, this incredible, deceitful, disingenuous, dishonest freak is? Uh, therefore expose human consumers to, to more risk. Expose you. Um, measurements that we have at present for high-level um, marine organisms that, that people consume, like bluefin tuna, suggest that still... Look, bluefin tuna is not an organism. you retarded, disgusting. How do you get your job? How do you keep your job? You become a PR uh, machine for the industry, and you just keep going. You ignore people like me. You look, ignore all the pictures on the beach, and you go around the community and say, there's nothing to worry about. Forget the fear mongers. They're all fear mongers. We're not. We went out to 16 beaches. You didn't do nothing like that. We had to do that because you wouldn't do it. And it was just luck that we worked that out. But now we're going to do the entire coast. And what are you going to do then, Jay? Who are you going to look at then? Who are you going to be able to hold your head up and look at then? Let me keep going with that video because there's some really shocking stuff. But I mean, my goodness. Um, the radiation that you're exposed to by consuming tuna is mostly... Tuna's not an organism, um, buddy. In, in fact, a factor of 600 um, greater uh, for naturally occurring radionuclides than for Fukushima. You can't get 600 times greater with normal than what you get with man-made. The man-made is changed. The gammas, the betas, the alphas, the x-rays, and neutrons are 2 million times worse because you went through the chain reaction. The stuff in Fukushima was milled down missiles. Is that already unstable? Is that already disgustingly, you know, carcinogenic to the entire planet sitting around and off-gassing radioactive elements into our environment for all those decades? And they put them through the chain reaction again. See, the elements, before they go to the chain reaction, are normal. Before they get, you know, weaponized and then go to the chain reactions, they get, you know, that they were normal. But when they went through that chain reaction, they're no longer... They're not the stuff that is made by the sun. The sun creates elements. We destroy them. We're completely different than what the sun does. And we boil a million gallons a minute of water. What does that mean? Well, you boil all the eggs, all the larvae, all the fish, every creature, every... Like, a glass of salt water has 75 to 100 million phytoplankton in a glass of water, salt water. Just, just phytoplankton, not counting the, the billions of other creatures. 
And can you imagine a million gallons a minute being killed by a nuclear reactor? So by proxy, a nuclear reactor is death. That's what it does. It can't live unless it kills, uh, you know, one to the power of 125 microscopic creatures a minute. All of these reactors, they're destroying the water on the planet. It's the most harmful thing imaginable. It's unimaginably how dangerous to go to do t things like that to the industrial. Ontario's got 25 reactors. They're going to get theirs. Their cover operants is coming. Let's go back to Jay, because you got to keep up with it. Uh, isotopes. But, um, I mean, these scenarios yeah, that, are, that are painted of, uh, of complete meltdown and disaster at, at Fukushima, um, they're, they're not... Uh, completely impossible events, and it, uh, again, right? He sees he's saying that it didn't melt down. Harvard and Stanford, Berkeley, MIT, all came out on the 15 and the 16 of March. The videos on my site. Type in Harvard. Type in Berkeley. Type in Stanford. You see, like a 30 second clip. Full link below to the original video, and three meltdowns and the fuel pools on fire. Right. So why are you lying to Canadians on? in 2013 when this was known a couple of days later that anybody looked at Harvard or Stanford including Yale done articles on it. Let me keep going. That's an outright deceitful thing to say. That's horrible. That's maniacal. Let's keep going. Uh, it's a very serious situation. It's something that we need to continue to monitor. He's um, saying it didn't. A uh, complete disaster at, at the Fukushima well, site. Didn't. You know, you have to revisit um, everything that I've said. A complete disaster. What the hell do you call three melted reactors? Chernobyl is one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. And here you are with 630,000. Not to go out and do research, to go into communities and brainwash people. That's why I couldn't do a money bomb tonight, because I got to come out and hit that. I won't give up on that one. That's going to be my theme song very soon. That'll be up on my site too. That is disgusting. And he's going to go into the communities, and you see what they were. You see what they're lined up with Woods Hole. They're, they're sucking the children in. Like, hang on a second. Look, you got to look at what they got done. I'll come back to Jay in a second. But this is what they're frigging up to. And where do I put that stuff to? Should have been on oh, Dana. I need a bigger screen. Uh, 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 uh. Not there. Not there. Music. No picture. Yeah, here we go. And Jay, now look at look at the pictures they're showing of people paying five hundred dollars. We'll get a load of this first. Wait now, hang on. They want you to help fund the location for five hundred dollars. Ha ha. You know why? They left it with samples. We do not have funding, and don't want to throw it away, right? No, and you got all these children lying to them. There's nothing in the water. It's like a big joke, right? Jay Jay's in on it. Huge. He used to work for Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, right? Um, uh, what's his name? Ken Busler used to use him to wipe his hands on after he ate pizzas. And somehow or another, Jay licked his way to the top. But look at this. You know, these people with good intentions, and they put their fate into the institutions. And instead of doing that, they took a camera and walked along the beach looking for life. Because it ain't there in North America. I can assure you. We're going to prove that in 60 days, unfortunately, horrifically, unimaginably. And we're factually, you know, we have no options. Look at the children. Look at the kelp. See? You're not going to see nothing. You're not going to see nothing. Look at the rocks. Nothing. See that? Nothing. Look. Naked. Buddy there. Look. Bird. Uh, cr what is it? A um, bunch of poop there. Or is that from... Um, it's just stained over time. See, that would normally be loaded with some kinds of marine life on the shoreline. You would expect to see something sticking off the rock at some point. Look at all the kids, right? Yeah, we're going to take your money, kiddies, because we're the monsters. Our name are the Woods Hole Oceanographics and the University of Victoria. Look, she's laughing. She's, ha, 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 $500. The idiots. People are stupid. And Jay's like, yeah, give me all your money. That's actually a picture of Jay at nighttime when someone turned out the lights. Yeah, it's an unusual one, but that's Jay. We're pretty sure. Crazy, creepy University of Victoria Oceanographic. Her leads a new radioactive 
creepy disinformation program to really muddle the water so it's too late for anybody to have an opportunity to do the right moral and ethical things. Now it's just an average day in the world of the crazies. And let's keep reading on that while we're over here. That's a great public demand for information. Researchers partner in the network include Woods Hole Oceanographic Creepy Institution in Massachusetts. Health Canada! Health Canada! Okay, hang on. Click. Let me come over and show you something. Come over to uh, nuclearproctologist.org and click on sections. Come down that section and look for Canada. Yeah. And that's a start for you. Wait for it. Fukushima fallout. This is Health Canada coming up. Evidence of sharp features in Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia. You should go over to all of this, folks. Several studies of the radioactive releases further down. The Fukushima plume. The plume provides a nice opportunity to test out our gadgets and gadgets. And the study focuses on the arrival of the, uh, I don't know, I can't pronounce that one now. i got to cover one eye. Boom! It's all Canada. Look at it. They've done an aerial survey along the coastline for 18 hours on March the 20th. And they found a snowstorm, an invisible snowstorm, in updating the coastline. But I'm the kooky guy. No, it never happened, Dana. So why did you publish that? And never talk about it again. Health Canada, they, they took samples every 15 minutes at 750 feet for 18 hours. And there was nowhere they went. They didn't find a plume, right? Plume, see? Plume. The rival of the bananas. I mean, plume. And let me get back to business. Let's get back to the, the video. I'll come over to that crap next. Get going, Dana. Here we go with Creepy Crawler. The only thing on the beach that crawls is him. Uh, based on the, the release that has happened and is still occurring from the site, suggests that, again, the objective risk to human beings, especially people living here on, on the North American coast, is relatively small. Mm. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. Well, You're very well, clear well, on hang that. On, hang on. Frankly, it's Look, good to hear. The jet streams are real. I know that's like a really rocker in the brain stuff, but the, the, the jet streams are real. Aren't they? Am I wrong? Wait, no, uh, let's go to the phone call. Anybody, 250, I'm sorry, 604, take your time, 604, 223, 1075. Danny, I don't even know your own number. No, I don't call myself. Just be like, anybody? I'm waiting. going take a few moments. Let's get back over to La La Land. Where Jay comes from? He's a creepy man. So 604-223-1075. You can actually understand the things I'm saying. Uh, but I, I just wonder, you know, if there is another earthquake, if, the, if there are, and, and we're speaking completely hypothetically here, and I'm not claiming to know w what the likelihood is, but if there were a complete meltdown, I mean, a, a, a worst-case scenario. Whoa! If there were a complete meltdown, folks. Well, buddy, I got a ting or two for you. <laughs> I know this is going to come as a really big shock. And he's lying to you. Jay Cullen is lying to you, man. That's outrageous. So that would mean he's lying to everybody in the institution, the university, all our children that he's teaching, and the bananas he's molesting, that he's lying, right? He probably grooms those bananas, right? And then molest them after. And so if somebody's willing to go out and lie and manipulate like that and, and say that there's no melted reactors at Fukushima. No melted reactors. But if there was, there was a melted reactor in Fukushima. Have there been any uh, uh, mod or has there been any modeling done on what sort of radiation levels we would be likely to see in the Pacific, both near Japan and here, if that worst case scenario were to transpire? Well, I, I think if you if you talk about an event of that scale, um, the only sort of point of comparison that we have is is uh, Chernobyl in 1986, 
And I think that the scientific community learned uh, a great deal uh, about the fate of radioactivity and radio. So what he'd done that time was, he said if there was an event of that size, if there was a meltdown, that's what he's getting to. Like, over and over he's doing this. So anybody who's watching it are, are taught that does not melt it down? Why is he doing that? Why don't the institutions take his degrees away? Do they realize how harmful it is to have someone with a degree out on CBC radio saying stuff like that? And how come CBC radio can't ask a simple question like, hey, I heard they were melted. What do you think? You guys in the environment from, from that disaster. Um, if something similar were to happen uh, on the coast of Japan, uh, again, I, I don't feel I can really comment. But right, he's talking about Chernobyl, where they had a meltdown and an explosion. But if something similar was to happen on the coast of Japan, what's he freaking talking about? What does he think happened there? Hey now, hey now, hang on, ho ho, what is this? What kind of world are we living in that we got to put up with that stuff? Let's go over to nuclear proctologist one second, dot org. And we got a phone call coming in. Let's put her in rewind for a second. Nuclear proctologist, one moment, please. You got the speaker. Hello. Hi, Dana. Yeah. My, my name's Lori. Hi, I'm Lori. From Ohio. Oh, nice. In the United States, love you. Watch you every day. You're too kind. I didn't even want to miss tonight, but I wanted to bring up a point that you might not have noticed. Okay. Um, I went to your site and I was looking at your photographs. I saved a couple and realized that you did not set the date on your new camera. Oh, you're kidding because me. the photographs say that you took the photographs in G on January 5th, 2014. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. So you no, that's important. That. That's important. No, I need to fix that. We're not going to use that camera yeah, no more. Can you hear me okay? You you took your, I'm sorry? Can you hear me okay? Yes. If well, you, yeah. Your camera says January 5th. Well, I never. The camera's brand new and only bought it a few days, the same day. So I got a receipt right. for the camera yeah, I mean, on the same day. Right. So that's the proof yeah. I need, right? So that gives me some wiggle room. But we're actually going to revisit all of that in a few days. And we'll set the date right yeah, this no, time. Right. No, that's so important. I agree with you. That's yeah, an important. Change that date on your camera. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's such a great comment. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Know, no, it is so. No, that's brilliant. I love it. I didn't catch that one, and I was just worn out. I couldn't handle it. But we got a receipt, and I'll have to get a picture and put that up for people, because that is brilliant. I love it. Okay, take care, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but Okay, bye-bye. See, that? that's awesome. I love that. Right? And that's what makes me stronger, right? That's what allows me to come out and be able to defend things, is because these little things that will get taken advantage of, but, I mean, in this particular scenario, I actually got the receipt for the camera that I only I bought it the day before. And I didn't think there would be a date showing up there, so I was, like, sick of it. Every time I tried to click on it, you know, the first time you use something, you can't get to work. I just never went back because I was trying to learn how to use the macro. And I never did, of course. And neither did Terry, but we done the best we could. <laughs> but the weather and the area is all summertime. But Yeah, that was pretty cool. I that's a, that's, that was very cool. So I got off track, but that's okay. We'll come back over. I'll probably fully figure it out and say, oh, yeah, we're going to look at, just for a second, I was going to click on that and take me over. And these are, that one is there's unit one. I don't know if you can see it. And, yeah, can't take me in there. Unit one, unit two, it still looks like it's intact. It's 100% meltdown. The fuel pool's all caught for her. Number one blew up. Number three... Right above that, he's Mox Fuel. He's missing. That's, these are 10 story buildings. The next one is Unit 4. There's more damage. The Dainey had four. There was 14 reactors went down in Fukushima. Um, here's a good picture of Unit 4 and Unit 3. They are, are annihilated. We'll come back over to Jay Cullen. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed that. Punisher was in. We had Laura in. Let's get back on track. Because I can. I didn't come over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just yakking away. Here we go back to Jay Cullen. 
I'll come back to those pictures in a second. In a meaningful way about what it would mean for us here. Sure. Um, it's not a melted reactor. It would, be, it would be a very serious um, situation to find ourselves in. And, uh, what do you mean? What do you, think, what do you think the situation is? There's three melted reactors. Hello, Jay Cullen. Should we all email him tomorrow and say, Jay, uh, there's a link below to his CBC interview. You made a couple of tiny mistakes there. Uh, we actually made a lot. No, actually, it was all mistakes. And by the way, Jay, the three melted reactors are, defi are for sure. And so do, shouldn't you get up and apologize if you want some credibility? Shouldn't people take that 630000 away because he's actually really, truly disgusting and disingenuous? He really, truly is just a fake, hopeless, demented lawyer for apologists for the nuclear industry. How can you do that, Jay? Why would you do that, man? What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you think we should deserve a chance, Jay? Let me keep going. That the world should be paying attention to what's going on at, at Fukushima, and it shouldn't be something that um, people simply dismiss as harmless. But I think, again, it's important to... To define what risks um, uh, we're actually exposed to at present. Yeah, and you said natural, your uh, potassium natural. I can't call it a name. See, natural in you know, a banana is not natural because if you eat a banana, you can't get any more. It's homeostasis. It's one of the first things you learn about this, Jay, and you don't know it, and yet you're there with our children. I don't feel comfortable knowing Jay is teaching children and telling them the reactors are not melted. Why should I be comfortable with that? You'll be getting a phone call in moral, actually. I'm calling you in moral, Jay. You can count on it, buddy. We're going to get you, and you're going to have to have an interview and be accountable. We're going to call up the dean and ask him why he's allowing you to say that. Does he sanction that? I'm getting sick of it. I'm tired of it. My knowledge of Ukrainian geography is a little fuzzy, so pardon me if I'm wrong, and, and Chernobyl is closer to the Black Sea than I recall, but it, it, I mean, it's not near a big ocean. I mean, have there been any other nuclear uh, meltdowns nearer the ocean that might provide some useful information on how radioactive materials, uh, you know, travel or what have you in, in, in oceans? Well, I, I'm not aware of any meltdowns uh, uh, right next to oceans. Uh, we, a, lot of, uh, a lot of what we do... Man, there's three melted reactors at Fukushima. How hard is it to wrap your mind around that? Just spend five minutes at Harvard or Berkeley or Stanford or Yale and put, type in the dates, right? And you'll find it, their first papers, their first videos where they come out and they told everybody, one, two, and three, melt it. Melt down, melt through, melt out. What was Jay? Sleeping in class again. Sleeping on a job. Chasing around the little chickadees. Chasing around your daughters. While you're talking about, to talking about bananas and lying to them. Until you got all their money and they're all dead and they haven't got no opportunity. Here we go again. Your arm is finished. You know about how the ocean operates and how it, it circulates. Hey, Luna. It's, it's, it's uh, the physical oceanography is actually based on, on these radioactive tracers that have been released to the environment. Um, they give us a lot of information about rates and dates of, of, of processes and events. But um, we do understand how the North Pacific Gyre works, broadly speaking, and release of... Yeah, it travels at two miles an hour up to nine. Let's say two miles an hour. It'll cross the ocean 130 days. Every day behind it is 129 plumes. 1,440 plumes a day. Every day, sustained, probably forever. And the ocean can't repair itself because we won't even stop it. We can't even try. Because he's after lying to everybody, saying it's not happening. And then getting and making a fortune. And people are getting on my face. My, my face, because well, I need a few thousand to go up the coastline and document it all. Picture everything. The dates, the places, I'll fix the time. The dates, the places, the GPS locations. And that's what I've done here now. It doesn't matter if the dates are wrong, because I gave you the locations. They're still not even going to be there, there. Even if we did take it back there, which I didn't, we've done that in nine days. <clears throat> and the receipt is when we bought the cameras, see? And that was from your donations. And the boat ride was from your donations. And that's what started all of this. But in order to keep the integrity, i got to get the date thing corrected. And anybody else want to give me a call? And stick it to me. I'm the guy. I like it. Give me more. Stick it to me. I like to have Jay come out and stick it to me. Because he can't. Hi, Miss Milky. And uh, Jan, I should say. 
I miss Milky. And we can talk now, Miss Milky, by the way. <laughs> I got a phone number that I can use. That's going to get used all the time. And it's uh, 604-233-1075. I'll get pretty good at this at some point. Hi, Annabeth, Cats Live, Luna, everybody, Radioactive Banana. I'm so proud of you folks. I'm so utterly thrilled to have you support me and allow me and set me free. Because that's what you got done. From yesterday, I was like, I was terrified this was not going to happen. I knew I could do a little bit, but by the, tonight, you know, Punisher, Jeff threw in another 2,000? Are you kidding me? Whoa, wow. And a Geiger counter. And, you know, Pia threw out a laptop and a Geiger counter. Uh, a wonderful soul who used to live up around Gibson looked at the pictures. She knows the beaches. She grew up there. And she was heartbroken, gave us 2,000. I mean, these are stories that I want to be able to recite forever if there, we get an opportunity. And what Jay Collin is doing in tandem with Woods Hall Oceanographic Institution is utterly, utter deception. It's unimaginable deception. We went to all the beaches and we can't find anything, right? It's, they're naked. There's 16 of them. They're up on the nuclearproctologist.org. But there was no snails, folks. There was no whelks. Let me get a picture for you. There was no sponges. There was none of the squirts, sea anemones. We didn't see anything at the high tide lines. We we're familiar with the stinky stuff, right? And the, the kelp grass was so rare. There, there was none at the super low tides of the normal areas that would get exposed for an hour. There was no insects, not only on the coastline, but none on the highways. It's unimaginable. There was no bull kelp forest. And when another week, when we head up north, we're going to put the end of this debate, or this argument, and get on with a debate. There was no beautiful, wonderful, you know, smorgasbord of lives anywhere. It was barren, desolate, naked rocks, which is four species of mussels, very sparrows, and star, a blue, a purple starfish, so spear, uh, sparing that we could barely find them. And that's why we want to go back and get everything in super high quality. And there was that uh, kelp rag, kelp weed, and the kelp lettuce. So four. There, we did manage to find a scattered whelk. And that got us excited. We found a couple, I think like six or seven, uh, snails, the black snails. That really got us excited because it gives us, it shows us that it's trying. But at 200 kilometers of coastline, so instead of Woods Hole taking water, shouldn't it be going down on the coastline and documenting the life and then other people can go there and double check because they haven't actually told the truth since they've been alive and we don't expect them to, but because we ain't got any other options until we get rolling here. That's all you see is that shitty kelp. It should look, all kinds of that stuff should be on that rock. And you see that kelp sticking up? Pieces of that should be sticking up in the air. Like the ocean... It's a complete soup of life. It's another soup of life. And one of the biggest ones, of course, that is very visible, very, and you would see it on all the wharfs, right? And the sticks on rocks at low tide. You can't get away from these things. Now there's nothing. Roger told me he's seen one, and he's seen a crow. <laughs> he's going to go north with us. And look at the kelp forest. You can't go anywhere in that 200 kilometers and find rather a kelp forest like that. <clears throat> and what was I rambling on about before, before I forget? Let me jump open. I was talking about pictures. I had, I was up on the website. Okay, I probably wasn't talking about, let me go here. That's unit one. And I was trying to do that earlier. One, two. It's 100%, all melt 100% down. Unit three, 100% meltdown. Unit four, destroyed. Utter total destruction. Here's a couple of quick ones. To chew on. Here we go. Number four, pull, boil, dry, and fire. No, it's okay, Dana. New York Times, November, or news, 311 footage. Flames sighted deep within Unit 4. No, Dana, they were wrong, too. You gotta believe us, Dana. I died 131 and number four, spent fuel pull 22,000 times. April of 14, above normal. Well, that meant, you know, I can do the numbers. It's 20. 
there's 10 times more 132. And what are you talking about all you doing 131? I know it's a signature, but there's better signatures. And they can find that one, and it has an eight day half life. Now, a half life is times 10. There's no such thing as a half, <laughs> it's times 10. See the game you play on you? See how they roll you over and go through your pockets and leave you there and walk away laughing at you? Treat you like an idiot? And they're doing that for 70 years. Tell you a banana was radioactive, a potato was radioactive. I've called these people out. Dear homeostasis. Now, if, there, if you take a Geiger counter and you got a banana or a potato or something, a glass of water, and you get something going beep, 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 it's time to run. Because potassium-40 can't get picked up on a Geiger counter. Right? So a banana, radiation in a banana, what are you talking about, boy? you got to take a quarter or a cubic meter of water, fresh water, for instance, and then you dry it. And what's left over is a whole lot of potassium-40. It's not can't harm you. You use it in every aspect of your life. And then they take that and weigh it. And for every gram, there's 25 bequels. That's how they do it. But it can't hurt you. They don't wear gloves, for goodness sakes, when they're doing it. It's harmless. Now, if there's a bequel of man-made material, you hear beep. And that's to be frightened of. That's to be terrified of. And now we understand that. N uh, iodine in number four pool suggests spent fuel pool started its zone. Oh, gee, I don't know. What's that word again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chain reaction. Everything's okay. They're getting their odds out, Dana. Out of, a, out of a building that's destroyed, you build a structure up and over it, but you didn't go in it. And if the, the one you're showing us on TEPCO and everywhere else, and don't say where, because I covered it too many times. I can't do it anymore. Now, reactor number four, spent fuel pool cracked from earthquake. Renewed nuclear chain reaction Fear that suspend nuclear fuel pool. No, Dana. We're doing working on it, boy. Yeah. The homeless are pretty tough, you know. They don't die for at least 40 days. Okay, let's get back over. Because I know that drives a few people crazy. And if it didn't, then the world wouldn't be the way it is because everybody's different. Let's come back and wind it all down. Tomorrow night we're going to do a money bomb, uh, so it's going to be called Fukushima Expedition for Life, money bomb, and we're taking pledges, and you can phone in, I should have Skype, and I will, and what you can, you know, if you pledge five, we'll count that, and we're going to use that number to plan out how we're going to get up and make it back, and that's what we're going to depend on, and if everybody else comes through, they said they were, like the foundations that I've been talking to in the last couple of days and the people that are going to fund us in the last couple of days, if they can do their end, the minute I know, you'll know. And then the weight's off everybody's shoulders. But right now, the weight is off our shoulders. We can kind of like just concentrate on the fact that we're, we're going to go. And that'll be the end of the nightmare uh, and beginning of the new one, right? But the end of the nightmare where we can't have a debate, where we can't... We, we got to put up with people like Jay Cullen saying there's no melted reactors on CBC right across Canada, played over and over on Sundays and Thursdays in the reruns, telling people they're, because he's you're supposed to be able to trust him, he's a professor at the University of Victoria, for goodness sakes. We're supposed to be able to trust these people, and how can we trust them now? You heard it yourself, folks. The link is below. And if you're really gullible, go fund a location for them. They love people like you. If you want the job done, we're going to do it. You hang on. You trust in us. We can prove it in 60 days. Starting next Thursday, we're going to go and prove it. And and that's it. See? They're out of a job. They're out of a pension. And they can't even look their neighbors or their friends or their families in the face anymore. It will be a good day for everybody. You know, there, there might be a future after all. But what you're going to do is go around to all the communities. I couldn't do it. I had to come out and slam that tonight. There's no way I can't. It is impossible. The implications of what he's doing versus what we're doing. It's not me. What we're doing. Setting it straight. Because we can't trust these people. We give them all the money they ever wanted. And he still can't do the job. Oh, we're going to go get samples. We'll put it up on our website. 
Well, what about Dana and Terry? Who's going to go out there on every beach and take the pictures of no insects, of no sand dollars, of no sea anemones, of no hermit crabs, of no tidal pools with life in it, no lynchings or Clintons, no sponges and sponges, no sea anemones. And if you see them, sure, you'll find a few, but you're not going to find the ocean in every speck and every piece loaded with life. You're not going to find enough on any of the 16 beaches that we covered and the evidence is up on our site. Prove me wrong. Anytime you want, I'll meet you anywhere you want. And we'll take you to every spot anytime you want. But you only got a bit of time left. Because when we head north, it'll be too late to come on board and say, oh my goodness, you're right. Because right now, you have forced us to do this. You have forced us to beg the panhandle literally to put every sacrifice, everything to get this opportunity. And we're not going to lose that. We're not going to fail. We're not. We're just not. We're not capable of it. You put us in this position where we have to take it control. Because you want to go up to all the communities and all the town centers and have meetings and lie to people. You will get lynched when they find out what you do. You cannot escape the wrath coming because the truth can't be held back any longer. And we have to have some kind of closure so we can move forward and try without the Pacific because it's dead. It's dead. The whole ecosystem is dead. If it doesn't seed one beach, okay, maybe I can figure out something happened. If it doesn't see 16 beaches and the islands and the rocks that were shown at those low tides it's something else okay and we have to go document it because otherwise he's going to go around to these communities and say oh, it's okay yeah it's fine yeah I, i'm not cancerous normal everywhere on every street and every house that's normal boy by the way we got six hundred thirty thousand dollar kickback this time ha <laughs> ha i had to kill everyone to get to get it i need to sell my soul so my children, my friends, my loved ones, my brothers and uncles and aunts, my fathers and mothers who put me in college, souls. You sold them out, man. You sold out everybody, every student that looks at you every day, you sell them out in such a bad way, man. To get up and say there's nothing, no meltdown at Fukushima. You are low, boy. You are scum. You can't get into a debate with me. I destroy every concept of honesty that is associated with you. Every morsel of morals that people might attach to you would be eviscerated, atomized and aerosoled forever and go around harming things, I'm sure. Okay, folks, it's disgusting. We called them out. We got it out of our system. We're going to go for broke. And I guess, you know, Pickering, Ontario is going to have to take their beating now tomorrow night. Is not tomorrow night because tomorrow night's money bomb. We got to do a 25 minute ha 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 money bomb. <laughs> I got some funny stuff set up for that one. And I got all, and if, from here on out, I'm just going to get on the side of the road with a cup if I need something, or I'll ask you. Right? But we got to get enough to finish the job. And I'm tired of arguing and fighting and pretending that this is going to get solved any other way. It's not. I don't want the job. Now I do. Now I now I want to go do it. I only want sixty days, and that's not much. We'll we'll document every every shoreline, every beach we get access. We're looking at a fifteen foot zodiac right now, and the motor is going to be six thousand or seven thousand. And then even when this is all over, those sixty days, you know, we'll keep going for quite a long time to make sure there's no wiggle room left for these people. We'll take advantage of the stuff we have and use it, like the Geiger counters will be used all the time, but we'll, well, you know, we don't know if it's going to be higher or lower, but we know we got a heavy count. And we know Geiger counters can't count potassium 40, so it has to be something real, see? You have to dry out all that water and weigh it out, and then it's as you figure out uh, every gram's around 25 becquels, that's how you work it out, how many becquels of potassium 40 is in your drinking water. It's done the same thing for the ocean. That's natural. That can't hurt you. You can take a bat in that stuff, it can't hurt you. Take a bat in the stuff we're talking about. Take one bat in that salt water and you got hurt for it. It'll catch you. It'll catch up with you. 
Who's yelling at me? I didn't do it. All right, hang on, folks. We'll catch everybody. I'm going to jump off. We'll catch everybody again tomorrow night. It's going to be a 25 minute money bomb. And I'm going to have, you know, fill you in on the rest of the details as quick as I can get them anyway. And I got more coming tonight and more tomorrow. It's for good news. This is so much good news that trailer is such good news. You know, having Jeff in the original Punisher site put his his money where his mouth is, right? And say, yeah, you know, that's not asking too much. And I got a little bit extra and I'm going to sacrifice and make sure the job gets done. That's what that's what that's why I say we know we're gonna do it because people I know the people out there that when the time comes to man up, God up for the women and everybody else, and uh, you know just I shouldn't categorize people, but the the people that get it and that understand that after even ten days we will be safe anyway because the evidence it'll grow exponentially every day, and we're going detail with twenty four million. If we get more money, we'll have 30 million. We get more, we'll have 40 million pixels. And we'll shoot everything in the highest resolution. And we'll put that up on the site. And we'll take samples from the soil under the microscope and put that up on the site, right? And, you know, I'll be keeping my eye on as much as what you tell me if, that I could do too. But you can't wear me out. But it's okay, it's only 60 days, see? We, we can only do so many things. And so even if we've got a bad day, we can take the slides, get the shots with the microscope, and still upload them, right? And then the wireless or the satellite feed, we can talk to you right from the beaches is what we're hoping to do. And unless we can't get the feed out, we will talk to you. It might be lower quality, but we'll show you the spots, and then we'll upload the higher quality, and you'll see the same picture but higher quality. And that's what would be the ideal way. And then the dates don't matter anymore <laughs> if I'm too stupid to get something right, which is... It's extremely important. I'm not trying to minimize the significance of that, but it still stands because we. I know for a fact we done it on the dates. So any, I, I got no options but to say anybody wants to go there, I'll go with you anytime you want, any spot, any beach. Me and Terry will be there. We're capable for sure. From here on out, we're capable, and we just need to set the balance and set the parameters, and then try to. You know, have a conversation. If you don't want to have a conversation at that point, right, uh, I, I wouldn't know what to say. I can't imagine not having a conversation at the end of 60 days or even after the next 10 days. I can't imagine it. And I'm always going to remember everything as those nine days anyway, the first nine days. Those things, every day they still haunt me. And I can't imagine the future will change and take away from that. The horror of those first nine days, the realization i got to come out and tell people that. I didn't know what to do. I struggled. That's why it took nine days. We went out 200 kilometers to make sure before we opened our mouths. And that was hard work, folks. And so that was the real deal. But we'll do better. We'll go and calibrate our equipment on those same spots. And you can meet us there if you like. Right? We're going to arrange that. No more. No more of saying it's not true. We're going to do everything we can so you can come there too. Okay, folks. Hugs for everybody. Purple Jim sends hugs for Miss Milky. Miss Milky wants to come. She can come anytime you want. You and your husband or, you know, Radchick and her husband. Any of you folks want to try to fund your way up with us, we're going to accommodate you, right? we got a radio station that's going to have a diver and a reporter coming out with us once we get up to terrorists and we're, you know, and so we expect more of that. And, yeah, we got a motor home to go with and we got, but it looks like a really nice setup. We'll give you pictures soon as we can as we can confirm everything. But we'll be safe, right? And we'll be reasonably comfortable compared to what I thought over the last couple of days. It's a complete relief. It's utter magic what you pulled off, folks. Don't think we don't know that every moment now of each day as we get ready, starting the vehicle up today was like, we got to make him a video and give him something good because that's all he done to us now in two days straight is good to us. And so we gave you that. And I think that's, and, and you should take it the way I mean it, right? Night, everybody. And once again, we got most of the pictures up on the nuclearproctologist.org. You can donate there. There's an address on it. You can send it. I got another mailing address I'm going to put up on the nuclear proctologist tonight or tomorrow morning for everybody. And uh, we're on our way, okay? We're going to go find out. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to share it all in real time with everybody. And there's no more arguing. And everybody 
can, you know, we can think about how we can change things in the near future, and we can actually talk about that when we get back constantly and why we're doing it, right? So hugs for everybody. I absolutely love what you've done in the last couple of days and today and the night and everything else. Keep me on my toes. Keep me honest and get us up there and we'll come back and that'll be the end of it, see? That's the thing about it. We know that. I know I keep saying it, but I want everybody to understand that I truly feel like the end is near for that part of it, not the other one. That's that's a whole new battle. And we'll try again tomorrow. We're going to come out tomorrow night. We'll see you then, folks. Take care.